Who was Giuseppe Garibaldi? Giuseppe Garibaldi, this man right here, was an Italian general, patriot, strong advocate of republicanism, and one of the key people and forces behind eventual Italian reunification. Now, I am an amateur lover of history. I read it and try to learn about it for my own enjoyment, but I don't pretend to be an expert. I did some additional reading for this presentation, and I have some sources I'll go over at the end. But first and foremost, let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, the, king, the Italian peninsula had been a fought-over mess ever since the fall of the Roman Empire. For several hundred years, various factions, both local and greater regional forces from around Europe, but even Muslim forces from North Africa and such, were fighting over Italy. It was a mess, to say the least. Now, Giuseppe Garibaldi was born in the 1830s, exact date unknown, but in the city of Nice, which is now in modern-day France, but at the time was under control of Piedmont. Now, in his youth, we know he participated in a revol an uprising. It failed. Pretty miserably. He was promptly condemned to death, and escaped to South America for 14 years. He worked briefly as a merchant, but he very quickly became involved in the regional conflicts at the time, in post-colonial South America. Spain and Portugal had pulled out of South America and Central America in a hurry. A big hurry. And what they left behind was about as much of a mess as Italy. And he participated in several conflicts. One of the ones I'll mention, just because it's almost too ridiculous. If you don't Google it, you probably not believe me. The Ragamuffin War. Which was a very real war. Actually led to the creation of a, a nation. Very briefly, the government collapsed. But it was where Garibaldi got a lot of his experience. But perhaps his greatest contribution to the South American conflicts would be the Uruguayan Civil War. Which was in reality a war between... Uruguay and Argentina, and he would create a force of Italian volunteers. They went by a couple names, but probably one of the most popular is the Red Shirts, which would become his motif for pretty much the rest of his military career. Now, they would participate in the Battle of San Antonio de Salto. Garibaldi would win, and this would earn him quite a lot of recognition and respect for his ability to command forces. He would use guerrilla tactics with his volunteer fighters, and he achieved quite a lot of success in these conflicts. We don't have time to go over everything, but he started making a very big name for himself. Now, eventually, his exile from Italy would come to an end. His brother had died, he got himself an inheritance, he bought himself an estate on an island, and while he worked briefly on and off as a merchant, he very quickly got involved in the fighting in Italy. He would participate in, he would lead a force known as the Hunters of the Alps, which were volunteer mountain fighters in one of the conflicts. But perhaps one of his greatest military successes that contributed to the unification of Italy was the Expedition of a Thousand. As you can see, they still have the red shirts. This is at the Battle of Volturno. in which he led this force into the south, to basically to free Sicily. And, well, it worked. He actually, once he got there, he had the backing, he had the backing of Piedmont Sardinia, the people that, even though they were monarchists, he had to throw his weight behind someone. He was willing to put aside temporary differences to work towards the unification of Italy. He actually declared himself dictator of Sicily for like a day just to get things under control, but these were not his only military successes. That was one of his biggest ones and his biggest campaign victories. But overall, really it comes down to he'd fight in several more conflicts against the Papal States, other things, and eventually Italy would be more or less unified under monarchist rule before transitioning into the Kingdom of Italy that more or less lays the groundwork for the Italy we know today. And it's a real shame 
because that had a huge effect on the trajectory of the world. But he's largely been forgotten outside of Italy and South America, even though he was incredibly famous even in America at the time. He was actually offered a commission as a general in the Union Army in the American Civil War. There were units named after him on both sides, the Confederate and Union. He turned down the offer because it had to do with whether or not slavery would be declared the priority of the war. Lincoln wasn't ready to do that yet. The deal fell through. He'd keep fighting in Italy. But the 39th New York Volunteer Infantry was named the Garibaldi Guard after him. This man had a huge amount of recognition. And it's largely been forgotten, but I want you to think for a moment about his contributions, and he's very much remembered as a hero to Italy, as I said, my thesis. But the fact that he worked so hard and succeeded in more or less unifying Italy, I mean, that set laid the groundwork for one of the major combatants of World War I and World War II, and is, Italy still stands today as one of Western Europe's democratic governments. And that's no small feat. This man's been on money. He's had like five ships named after him in the Italian Navy, including an aircraft carrier. He was larger than life. And, I mean, there's not much more to say. He was, without a doubt, the man. Even though he was largely backed up by the Kingdom of Sar Piedmont Sardinia, like that was like the powerful force behind him, Garibaldi's the man who got a lot of it done. Now, some of my citations include biography, Max Smith, Dennis, 1956, Garibaldi, A Great Life in Brief, Dan H. Coyle. That was where I got the citation about him getting the commission for being a Union General in the American Civil War, and of course, the Encyclopedia Britannica article on the Battle of San Antonio de Salto. That's about it. Hope you all have a great time. Goodbye.